Hi, good morning everyone and happy Friday. Welcome to another session of weekly Q&A webinar with Big Switch Networks. Um, my name is Sunit Chauhan, Head of Product Marketing here at Big Switch, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. So today we continue our Tech Alliance webinar series and have a very special guest joining us from Mirantis, uh, the pure play open stack company that most of our listeners are very familiar with. Uh, but before I introduce the topic and the co-host for today, let me quickly go over some of the housekeeping information as I do every week. We host this webinar every week and we've structured it as a 30-minute Q&A session. As we go through the live presentation, I encourage you to ask questions using the Q&A box on your webinar dashboard. If you're watching this video in a rebroadcast or a recording, uh, or you have questions on a particular past or upcoming webinar topic that you would like our panelists to address, I highly recommend that you go to bigswitch.com slash webinars and submit a question using the link provided there. Now, finally, at BigSwitch, we believe that there's no better way to learn about a product or technology than to actually take it for a test drive. For a free online real-time access to our SDN Fabric products, please visit labs.bigswitch.com. So with that, and without any further ado, let me introduce our panelists for today. We are excited to have Jason Wenner, Vice President and Chief Architect at Mirantis join us. Welcome, Jason. Thank you for having me. I'm also joined today by Bala Ramachandran, Principal Product Manager here at BigSwitch, and he also manages our technology alliances. Uh, welcome, Bala. Thank you, Sunit. Glad to be here. And finally, our regular attendees are very familiar with the name Ganpati Bhatt our senior TME, and as always, he has a demo lined up for us at the end of this presentation. Uh, welcome again, Ganpati. Thank you, Sunit. Now, just to set the stage for the next 25 minutes or so, uh, Bala is going to kick us off with an overview of Big Cloud Fabric and our OpenStack enhancements, uh, especially the ease of deployment that Mirantis Fuel integration provides. And then uh, Jason will spend some time sharing his thoughts about uh, resiliency and reliability requirements uh, of enterprise OpenStack pods, uh, including, I should mention, the results from a Chaos Monkey-style stress testing done with uh, Big Cloud Fabric running the Terrasort benchmark. Uh, with that, Bala, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you, Sunit. So um, let's start with a quick overview of Big Cloud Fabric. Um, BCF is industry's first bare metal SDN data center fabric solution. It's a leaf spine cloth fabric. Uh, it provides a physical and virtual uh, workload connectivity within a data center pod. And virtual workloads supported are across multiple hypervisors, ESX, Hyper-V, KVM, and Zen. The leaf and spine switches are dense 10 gig, 40 gig, bright box or white box switches from vendors such as Dell and Axon. They run a um, switch slide operating system, uh, lightweight, bare metal switch OS built for SDN. The leaf and spine switches utilize the complete L2, L3 tables of the Trident 2 ASICs, which are the switches to provide the maximum scale for the fabric. So um, by leveraging bare metal switching hardware with our software, um, it really helps us deliver a very cost-effective production grade solution. While customers enjoy the benefits of hardware software disaggregation, uh, BCF is actually delivered to them as a ready-to-deploy solution with a single point of support for the entire solution, which includes hardware, software, support, cables, optics, everything. And, and this single point of support is either Big Switch or Dell. Um, intelligence in the fabric is hierarchically placed. Most of it is in the Big Cloud Fabric controller, where you know the configuration, automation, troubleshooting occur through a single pane of glass offering tremendous operational simplicity. However, some of it is judicial, judiciously offloaded to uh, switch slide OS on each switch for resiliency and scale. Redundancy is built throughout the fabric, across switches, and the controllers to ensure no single point of failure. Headless mode, where uh, and the entire controller cluster is unavailable, is also supported. So with um, built-in multi-tenancy, the BCF achieves application agility with configuration based on tenant-centric logical networks. And uh, BCF supports seamless insertion of layer 4 to layer 7 services, such as 
uh, load balancers and firewalls, and also supports service chaining. Finally, uh, BCF integrates very well with OpenStack orchestration system, making OpenStack clouds a very popular deployment scenario. And, and we'll get into details of this today. So while we talked about you know, several BCF benefits, I would say BCF is synonymous to three words, simple, simple, and simple. With configuration, automation, and troubleshooting done via the big cloud fabric controller, the number of management consoles goes down dramatically compared to the traditional box-by-box -box design. So that's what I mean by uh, the simple aspect of BCF. And we'll get into more details here. For example, a 16-rack traditional box-by-box -box network design would have 38 management consoles. And in BCF, that has been cut, cut down to one. And this results in massive time savings, very high change velocity, central visibility, and a much simpler design for automation. And what are some of these operations which are automated? First, first of all, it's automatic installation of switch light OS as the image gets downloaded from the controller during boot up of the switch, auto configuration, automatic topology updates and event notifications based on fabric link state changes, auto scaling of the fabric. This means like adding or removing nodes or links within the fabric requires no additional configuration changes on the controller. And, and last but not the least, a, a very interesting uh, feature which is automatic fabric upgrade, which is coordinated and orchestrated by the BCF controller, ensuring minimum fabric downtime. So this operation, uh, which could take many hours and multiple maintenance windows for box-by-box -box config, is completed in a matter of minutes for a fully loaded 16 rack BCF. As a powerful management tool, the controller console exposes a web-based GUI, REST APIs, and a traditional network style CLI. In summary, the entire workflow of deployment, provisioning, and management has been extremely simplified with BCF. Now let's talk about our joint solution with Mirantis. Mirantis and Vixwitch are um, partnering to accelerate OpenStack deployments, and we are very excited about this partnership. Customers can now build clouds with modern hyperscale style network designs, leveraging SDN fabrics built with bare metal switches. So the joint solution consists of um, big cloud fabric deployed with production grade Mirantis OpenStack distribution and fuel installer, which tremendously simplifies cloud deployments. This solution will enable customers to quickly deploy OpenStack clouds that are scalable, resilient, operationally simple, and highly cost optimized. Um, and the two companies uh, have tested, benchmarked, and documented their products as interoperability, performance, and resiliency. You'll hear from Jason some very interesting results from the resiliency tests that were performed on the fabric. So let me. Um, talk about the different deployment options that are available with our joint solution. We support both OpenStack networking options, NOAA networking for existing customers that are deploying it, and Neutron for customers who prefer to deploy richer networking services. So NOAA networking, layer two networks based on VLANs can be pre-provisioned in BCF, and the OpenStack admin can use the VLAN manager to allocate VLANs from this pool to the OpenStack projects or tenants. Note that BCF does not have any scale limitations, and one can pre-provision all the way up to 4K VLANs. And with Neutron, provision is, provisioning is dynamic by leveraging the ML2 integration. So, um, so Neutron uses this modular layer two model, or ML2 model, where you know, users can select a driver mechanism corresponding to the physical switch uh, vendor to automate the config of their infrastructure. For BCF, this is achieved by the BSN driver, which is integrated with ML2 during the installation process. So as networks are configured by the OpenStack admin, the Neutron service invokes the BCF controller through the REST API to dynamically provision them on BCF. So in this way, tenant-specific workflows can be automated with OpenStack. BigSwitch has done some cool enhancements to OpenStack Horizon, which is what uh, is shown here. And these uh, enhancements provide tremendous operational benefits to users. So the first one is the troubleshooting tool, which provides visibility into the path of traffic between two endpoints in a fabric. And uh, this is actually a, a BCF feature called test path, which has been made available in the OpenStack dashboard. 
when an OpenStack user notices an issue with his application, he can use this capability to determine if the problem is with network connectivity without having to open a trouble ticket to the network admin. So if you think about it, you know, this results in significant operational savings and simplifies troubleshooting by a great degree in an OpenStack environment. And the other feature that is exposed uh, through Horizon is the heat orchestration network templates, which enables rapid provisioning of pre-validated configuration. So for example, OpenStack users looking to deploy a three-tier app can just select a network template for the three-tier app for automatic deployment without having to go through complex configuration steps. And in addition, the user can avoid going through a tedious approval process as the OpenStack admin has already validated the template with network and security admins. So Ganapati will be showcasing these features in his demo shortly. Um, and finally, a quick view into some future opportunities. Um, Miranda's OpenStack is being extended to support VMware vSphere workloads. So a uh, potential integration point uh, would be to have a joint uh, BCF Miranda's OpenStack solution certified for vSphere workloads. So we're looking into supporting this capability in a future BCF release. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pala. Um, let me pass uh, the, the control over to Jason. Um, or Jason, actually, we will move the slides for you. Uh, why don't you, you know, unmute your phone if you're not unmuted and then um, take it from here. Ready to go. Thank you. So before we flip the slide, my focus is entirely on how to enable our customers to run their mission critical applications on OpenStack without having to invest in an army of people to support the infrastructure and the applications, to make it easier for them to rapidly roll new applications, operate those applications successfully with their customers, and manage their overall operational cost. So that's where most of my focus is, is on reducing the risk of operation and the cost of operation. And that's why the next thing I'm going to talk about in the next slide is why, where you need resiliency in your OpenStack installation. We're, the modern pattern that we're building towards is horizontally scalable applications driven by Amazon where you accept the failure of any individual hypervisor. It's really just, you know, table stakes because once you can accept that within your application, you no longer have to have somebody woken up in the middle of the night if a machine is in trouble. It also simplifies your infrastructure costs because you no longer have to build highly resilient infrastructure to avoid the cost of having to engage a person. And it's also, at that point, you can now scale much larger because you no longer have to scale your physical organization and your capital budgets. We, let's see. What we can't accept is instability in the network. Everything in that horizontally scalable pattern assumes that the underlying network is sound. You may have failures in individual pieces. You may lose a port. You may lose a link. You may use a, lose a switch in a tour. But overall, that network is up, and you can add and remove capacity from it so that in the event of a failure, you can provision new virtual machines, hopefully automatically, to pick up the workload that just fell off due to the underlying failure. So network resiliency is the key to being able to build and operate mission critical applications cost effectively. Next slide. So Netflix has really driven this with their uh, whole fleet of simi the Simian army. The, what we have discovered ourselves is unless we can continuously inject failures into the networking layer and verify that the network is available to our applications, we can't stably build mission critical reliable applications. So how we do this is we set up baseline workloads and then that hopefully span the entire cluster so that we can isolate individual pockets of misbehavior and then we start running that application with good monitoring and we inject failures across the board to see what happens and how much intervention is required by people or tools to keep the application up. And that takes us right into our next slide here with what we did with the big switch. We used Hadoop's TerraSort as an example of a resilient horizontally scaled application. We have the HDFS layer that 
is somewhat self-healing. We have the MapReduce jobs, which are fairly self-healing. However, any instability in those layers shows up as performance impacts. And this also gave us a tool that we'd understand that we could exercise easily at large scale across a cluster. So if Bala wants to step in and walk through a little bit about the cluster details in more detail, I'd be happy for it. But um, I can walk through it as well if you like. Yeah. Um, so essentially the test configuration is, uh, consists of 16 racks um, of the cloth fabric, 32 leaves and six spine switches and uh, 42k simulated endpoints. Um, and so these endpoints have been simulated uh, with a traffic generator. And so there are there were three racks of OpenStack, um, you know, uh, rack, three three racks which were which were running the the Hadoop job on OpenStack, and then and then we had additional 40, 42k simulated endpoints, and then the Hadoop master and 61 workers were running on the three racks. Uh, in total, 75 neutron networks in the OpenStack uh, projects under stress. So uh, the the key thing is the way we uh, actually uh, exercise the resilience of the fabric is by inducing different um, failures in the fabric while the tests were happening, while the, the Hadoop TerraSort, TerraSort benchmark tests were running. So link failures every four seconds, leaf spine switch restarts every eight seconds, and SDN controller failures every 30 seconds. And so this was constantly running in the background. So the goal here was to put a, a heavy baseline load on the cluster overall and then deploy a large horizontally scaled application and run that application under load. We did this as a, a regular baseline with everything, with everything working perfectly. And, let's see. and then again, we did this while injecting these failures. And the net result was with the big switch fabric and OpenStack, the jobs ran completely unaffected by injecting this level of failure with a heavy load on the cluster. One of the, this is sort of an aside here, one of the things I don't find interesting is when someone deploys a fresh cluster, has nothing else on it, and runs a small test job and says, hey, everything is perfect. It only matters to me if you're running under heavy load and then you start failing things and see what happens, because that's what really happens in the world. And if you can't make it work in the real world, it's nothing. So let's, uh, next so, slide here. So Jason, that, that ties uh, nicely to a question that one of our uh, attendees has asked. Um, you know, the, the TerraSort benchmark, uh, as explained by Bala Niu, I mean, that's great, but when people are looking at their OpenStack deployments, they're usually testing it in a POC kind of environment and then they have to take it to production networks. So any recommendations there? What, what should people be looking at when they are doing uh, these proof of concepts as far as their networking uh, fabric is concerned? We're building a larger set of SDN tests that will hopefully appear and be available for everyone to use over the next couple of months. But the key here is cluster has to be under load. And particularly with OpenStack, um, you need to have history in your database too because that's actually a load on the system. And then injecting failures. And for my, one of the kind of what I call a part of what we're calling the pre-production checklist is to load the cluster up, build the history, start injecting failures, and verifying that every time you inject a failure that the monitoring and alerting tooling that you have recognize that failure, the self-remediations do no harm and can correct many of the failures. And if a person needs to be alerted, the runbooks that they have actually can be executed successfully to restore service. And that's really part of the key stepping forward to production. Sounds good, uh, thank you. So this is a little more detail about the equipment. We talked about this before. And the, the TerraSort was running in about 7 minutes, 20 seconds, um, essentially within the error bars, either in the, in the no failure situation or with heavy failures in the environment. And that was, I found that quite amazing. The other sort of interesting side note here again is there are three racks of computes are all of, they're not a homogeneous set of machines. 
And when we were debugging this for the first time, we couldn't understand why the test performance, the unstressed, or sorry, the unfailure mode test performance was all over the map. And what we found was that we had VMs of different performances in the cluster, and if the reduced task landed on a slow VM, or if enough of the map task landed on a slow VM, the overall performance would be terribly low. So we actually reran this just on with VMs on the hypervisors that were actually the high performance hypervisors to give us a smooth performance, which is another interesting thing to watch for is knowing the performance of your hypervisors because you can't expect that every VM of the same flavor size will give you the same performance. I think that's it for me unless there are questions about this. Uh, that's a great presentation. Thank you so much for uh, sharing the results. Uh, in the interest of time, let me quickly pass over the control to Ganpati, and he's going to give us uh, a demo of uh, OpenStack deployed on the Cloud Fabric. Ganpati, let me know. Sure. Let me share the screen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Jason, uh, for sharing the uh, Chaos Monkey result uh, and also talking about the resiliency requirement of application network. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to show three things uh, around what uh, Bala and uh, Jason uh, talked uh, earlier. The first thing would be uh, the Mirantis SQL, how it simplifies the Mirantis OpenStack deployment by walking you through the deployment steps. And secondly, I'm going to uh, show you the BCF integration with OpenStack, uh, which comes with two parts. Uh, first thing is the integration with the Neutron networking project. Uh, to build a self service model for the application developer. And the second one is the integration with the Horizon, uh, where we have put in a couple of enhancements uh, uh, around heat networking template. And the second one is being uh, the BCF Fabric Reachability Test Tool, uh, which helps the uh, developer to, for debugging any uh, connectivity issues. And to show that, I have uh, this topology, a uh, two rack topology, uh, which comes with two leaves uh, in each of the racks. Then we have a two spine for redundancy. Then we have a BCF controller, which would manage all of these bare metal switches running switch light operating system as a single entity fabric. Uh, that's about the BCF. And from the Mirantis OpenStack side, I already installed Mirantis OpenStack using the fuel on three of the nodes. Uh, this is a small deployment uh, scenario just for the demo. I have one OpenStack controller node, another two compute nodes. Uh, now, let, let me uh, take you to the first demo, this is just to show how I use Mirantis SQL to uh, deploy this particular Mirantis OpenStack uh, environment. So, uh, this is a fuel uh, interface. So once you install the fuel node, uh, you would get uh, this interface once you log into the fuel node. Uh, the first thing, as a OpenStack Cloud uh, admin, what you need to do is first define your uh, the OpenStack cluster uh, environment. And Fuel makes it easy to choose and configure your environment with step-by-step -step wizard. Like if you click on this, I already have one created, but let me walk you through the uh, steps which I did to install this. So once you click on this, uh, just you have to provide the name. Then you have to choose the operating system, base operating system you want to have, the CentOS or Ubuntu. I have Ubuntu in my setup. Then you choose the, the HA mode here. So typically you would choose HA given the reliability is very important uh, in, in any network, any uh, uh, kind of application. Uh, then the next thing is the, the hypervisor of your choice. Right? And in my case, it's a KVM. You can also go with the, the vCenter like uh, Bala mentioned earlier. Then the networking piece. Uh, here you can go with the NOVA network, uh, Neutron. And the Neutron is the one uh, I'm using it, uh, given as the Bala mentioned. That way, we provide the BCF plugin here. That way, dynamically, it can configure the physical fa fabric once you create an uh, OpenStack network uh, on a Horizon dashboard. The next thing is the storage backend. Uh, either you can go with the default or you can use the set. Then additional services as you uh, need in your deployment uh, environment. And just to finish it, and it will create the environment for you uh, in a simple a few steps. And uh, the second step is uh, once it uh, deploys the environment, now you need to change some of the basic things 
uh, if you want to change it. Especially the, from the networking side of things, uh, you need to change the IP address which would be used uh, to give this IP address to the OpenStack nodes and also to get the packages from the uh, internet, uh, assign the VLAN accordingly uh, depending on your network. Then there are some uh, management and storage VLANs which you can keep with uh, default because it's a private IP anyways. Then the other thing is the VLAN range. Uh, this is the VLAN range uh, here you provide which will be assigned to all the networks created on by the developer when they host their uh, network or uh, workloads on the OpenStack cluster. Once you make these changes, save the uh, settings, then there are some additional settings you can change like uh, uh, the username, password, and some of the, uh, the storage related stuff. Uh, but for the most of the thing, you can just keep it default. Uh, that's about the OpenStack environment. Now, the second step would be the automated uh, discovery of the nodes. So you may have uh, 40, 80, 160 servers in your uh, OpenStack deployment. All right, four racks, eight racks, or 16 racks. So what you do is connect all of those uh, hosts to the uh, the management network where the fuel uh, node is connected, and the fuel node automatically discovers the, all of those nodes, uh, assuming you have uh, uh, enabled the network boot on all the compute nodes, and it will come as a lead, uh, and fuel will detect all the nodes and puts it in uh, as part of this unallocated nodes, and it provides all the leads of nodes. It, uh, detected, which is dynamically done. Once you uh, have all the nodes detected, then come here and do a add nodes. You would see list of nodes which are ready to be uh, given a role, and uh, <coughs> the, uh, the compute node which you want it to be a controller, and give a controller role here, and then select the other uh, nodes, compute, uh, and give a role as a compute here, and save the changes and come here. That's what you need to do. Then it will be uh, put as a like, controller bucket and the compute bucket, bucket. Then the last thing you need to do is, now we are ready to deploy. Just click on the deploy. It automatically uh, deploys the, the OpenStack for you. It installs the base operating system and also the OpenStack components uh, for you. Uh, once uh, the OpenStack installation is complete, you would say the ready on this column and it will also pop up the banner saying that hey, OpenStack is ready to be uh, used and click on this. So once you click on this, you'll get this Mirantis OpenStack screen. Right now it's uh, ready to uh, be used. So at this point, you need to install the Big Switch plugin uh, uh, by using uh, two simple steps. Uh, here are the two simple steps. Get it, uh, log into the fuel node, get the script from GitHub, the big pack script, then run the big pack script with the BCF controller IP and the credential so that now OpenStack knows about the big cloud fabric uh, controller uh, through this uh, BCF plugin so that it can dynamically configure the big cloud fabric with all the network. So with that, let me uh, take you to the, the second part of uh, the demo, the BCF integration. So let me directly take you to the, the BCF enhancement we have for the horizon. As you can see, under the network, uh, under the network fabric, we have this big switch logo here. This is the, the enhancements we have done. There are two of them, reachability test. I will uh, show it at the end of the uh, demo. And the network template. As an admin, you can create a network template based on your requirement. This is tied to the heat template in the background. Uh, then all other users can use this template to host their workloads. For simple example, uh, I have is a three-tier app. Create three-tier app here. If you click on this as a user, application developer, I need to just use this and uh, give the CIDR block for this particular Uh, tier like web tier has 30.1, 30.2, app tier, DB is 33.0. Before I apply template, let me take you to the Big Cloud Fabric dashboard. So this is a Big, uh, Big Cloud Fabric dashboard. Uh, as I said, we have a two rack topology, and two uh, hosts are connected here, and a third host is connected to this rack. Now coming to the tenants, uh, we already have a few tenants configured. Uh, tenant is nothing but the, the project in OpenStack world. Uh, 
So we already have three OpenStack tenants created uh, previously. Uh, let me add this new tenant and its workload and see how it reflects here. Login timeout. There are the two logins that's the reason it's Let me apply the tenant. At this point, the OpenStack creates a network. As we uh, mentioned in the network template, web tier, database tier, and application tier. And the same information is dynamically propagated here. As you can see, we have only three tenant, and the four tenant got created here. As you can see with the white, this is a username uh, uh, for that particular uh, tenant. And three tiers is co uh, configured here dynamically. So now at this point, the network is up and running. Now you can create an instance. As an application developer, just create an instance here. Let me create an instance in the web. Web tier, let me create three of them. Use the image, the SPM here. And coming to the networking, just click on the web because we are creating uh, the VMs on the web tier and just launch it. In the back end, the NOAA scheduler would schedule the, these VMs and also gives the IP addresses for this particular thing. As you can see, it has given IP address 1.2, 1.3, and 1.5. So which is dynamically uh, propagated uh, to the uh, the BCF traffic through the, our plugin. So if you come here, if you see uh, 3.2, uh, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.5, uh, all three are already learned here. And if you see that VLAN number 1003, which was given in the uh, the fuel uh, installation setup, so it gives one of the VLAN from that range to this particular network. So this is how you dynamically get all the configuration from OpenStack uh, to the uh, the BCM. And application doesn't have to application developer doesn't have to worry about uh, the configuring uh, stuff on the physical fabric. As a last step. If there is an issue with the, the communication between the hosts, which we just created, how do you test it, right? Uh, let's test that. Before that, let me grab the ID of that particular tier, which is needed as part of the input for this test. Segment name. Check what are those? Okay. Select a result, whatever you want. In most of the cases, you would select forward it, then create a test. It just creates the test. Now you run the test. Uh, it seems that both the hosts can talk to each other. Let's see the result. As you can see, as an application developer, you get a physical view of where this particular host is decided and how it. Uh, takes the path when the uh, when this particular host talks to the other. So it goes to the rack one, goes to the spine, then comes back to the rack two and goes to the, the end host 1031.5. So this is how uh, we bring in simplicity in terms of operation uh, for the application developer. To summarize, uh, we saw uh, how Mirandis fuel streamlines and accelerates the process of deployment, deploying Mirandis OpenStack, and also we saw uh, the big switch uh, integration with Neutron and Horizon to bring in uh, operational simplicity to the OpenStack user. Uh, with that, uh, back to you, Sunil. Sounds good. Thank, <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, uh, Jason, Bala, and Ganpati. I really appreciate you guys taking the time. My pleasure, guys. I love educating people about OpenStack because I love OpenStack. For our attendees, this concludes our presentation for today. Uh, but if something we discussed here piqued your interest, or you would like to know more, just head on over to our web, uh, website, bitswitch.com. All of our past webinars, including this one, will be posted online, and you can get to those from our homepage. Uh, if you want to try out Big Cap Monitoring Fabric or Big Cloud Fabric for real, please sign up to get free access to our online lab and get almost immediate access to our products. And last but certainly not the least, we launched uh, 
BICTAP and BCF starter kits towards the end of last year, uh, starting at a list price of 29 and 39k respectively. These kits include the switching hardware, all of the software support, and even cables that you uh, that make it really easy for you to implement your very first SEN style data center. Um, so if you're looking for a, a mature, rock-solid SEN product as, a, as proven by the, uh, the Chaos Monkey Torture Test, uh, we have a detailed brochure online, and again, you can get to it from our homepage. Now, next Friday, December 30th, we have another very special event signed up. Uh, the details are yet to be announced, uh, but please be on the lookout for additional details on that front in the coming week. Once again, thank you all, and have a great weekend.